What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with our probability unit. Today, we are going to be looking at theoretical versus experimental probability and explaining the differences between those. So let's take a chance and look at our objective today. Our objective today. Today, I will be able to compare the theoretical and experimental probability by creating an experiment. But first, let's start with our math vocabulary. So there are actually a couple different types of probability. Um, and as you advance further into your math studies, you'll learn about all of them. But today we're going to be talking about theoretical probability and experimental probability. We've spent two lessons talking about probability. We didn't name it, but what we were talking about was theoretical probability. What can we expect to happen in a, an experiment based on the math, right? And we talked about throughout those two lessons that that might not actually be what happens, right? When you flip a coin twice, it's totally possible that you land on heads both times, right? But based on the math, we're expecting you to land 50% on heads and 50% on tails. In experimental probability, you're actually talking about what happened during the test experiment. So experimental probability is what actually happens when we test the experiment. So you're predicting with theoretical probability before you start, and then as you start experimenting and flipping that coin or rolling the dice or whatever, picking marbles out of the bag, whatever you're doing, you take a look at the results and that's how you come up with your experimental probability. Let's take a little bit closer look at the differences between the two. So just like we said, right, we've, this is what we've been talking about, the probability of an event is the number of ways that event can happen over the number of total outcomes. We're actually making a ratio here. Really what we've been doing is talking about theoretical probability. So theoretical probability is the number of ways it can happen over the number of total outcomes. Just like we talked about, the probability of the event of rolling the heads is 50%, right? There are only two outcomes, and we predict that if you roll it twice, one of those would be a head, and same with the tail, right? One half equals 50%. That's our theory about what's going to happen. But like we know, real life doesn't always happen the way we expect. Okay, so let's say you rolled the dice 10 times and landed on head six times and tails four times. What is the experimental probability there? Well, to find the experimental probability of an event, we're actually going to take the total number of trials, so how many times we flipped a coin, and that will be our denominator, okay? And then the frequency of the event, or how many times that event happened, will be our numerator. So if you want to write the experimental probability of what happened when we actually did the experiment, we could say the experimental probability of landing on heads was 6 over 10. We did 10 total trials, and the frequency or the number of times it landed on heads was 6, which means the experimental probability of tails would be 4 tenths. Okay, because again, th these are complements of each other, so they have to equal the one whole, right? It's 100% certainty that when we flipped it, even during our experiment, it landed on either heads or tails. So you can see the difference right here. Theoretical probability is what we expect to happen. Experimental probability is what actually happens when we do the experiment. So let's actually do this experiment together. Let's see what happens when we flip the coin. So we already know the theoretical probability of laying down heads and tails, right? We just spent literally five minutes talking about it, but let's test it. So first of all, let's write that down. So the theoretical probability of laying down heads is going to be one half or 50%. And we know the experimental probability, or sorry, the theoretical probability of landing on tails is also one out of two. If we flip the coin tw twice, we expect it to land on tails once. If we flip it 50 times, we expect it to land on tails 25 times. If we flip it a million times, we expect it to land on tails 500,000 times, right? Because that'd be half of that. But what actually happens when we do this? So here, what we're going to do, we're going to flip the coin 10 times, keeping track of outcomes of each trial. So this is called a relative frequency chart, so we're going to keep track right here. Then, when we fill this relative frequency chart in, we will take a look at comparing our experimental probability to our theoretical probability, or what actually happened to what we thought was going to happen. Then we'll keep going, and we'll go 50 times we flip the coin, do the same thing, and then we'll flip it 100 times. So let's get started with our experiment.
So you can see as we flipped it, okay, we showed you that we kept track as we flipped it. We flipped it a total of 10 times and it landed on tails eight times and heads twice. So, or the relative frequency of landing on heads was two tenths or 20%. And a lot of times you see relative frequency written as a decimal, so I'll write that up here. It landed on tails eight out of 10 times, which gave us an eight tenths for the relative frequency. So when we add those together, obviously that should equal to one because these events are complements for each other. We predicted though that it would be 50%. But right now, we're not even close to 50%. Our experimental probability right here for tails is 8 tenths, and our experimental probability for heads is 2 tenths, okay, or 80% versus 20%. Why did that happen? Why is it not close to our theoretical probability? Well, because life isn't perfect, right? You can't always predict what's going to happen. We think that every time we flip it, there's a 50% chance that it lands on tails. So we did 10 flips, and this is our experimental probabilities we got for each one. And it doesn't match up with our theoretical probabilities. Let's keep going, though, and go all the way to 50. So now we've flipped our coin 50 times. We have 50 trials, and you can see that we had 23 heads and 27 tails, right? So our relative frequency was 23 over 50, which is 46 hundredths, and our relative frequency for tails was 27 over 50, which was 54 hundredths. And again, these should add up to 100 for the total, and they do, or sorry, one, okay, so one whole. And you can see now our experimental probability, I'm gonna write this in blue because there's a lot of stuff going on here, for writing the heads after 50 trials, we could say it was 46%, okay? You could write as a ratio, I'm just gonna do the percents come run out of room. And our experimental probability for tails is now 54%. And you can see we had some more trials and it looks like our numbers are getting closer and closer to what we expected to happen to our theoretical probabilities. When we only did 10, we were way far off. Now we've done 50 and we're not quite to 50%, right? We're not quite to exactly what we thought was gonna happen. But again, this is real life, but we are getting closer. Let's keep going though and do another 50 to make our total 100. And that is awesome. I did not expect this to happen, but you can see that the heads happen 50 times, the tails happen 50 times, which means our relative frequency is basically one half, right? We would write it as a decimal. This is going to add up to one still. And it did not, I did not mean for it to work out like this, but that's perfect because we did the experiment. And after 100 trials, we actually were exactly what we thought we were going to be. Our experimental probability now for heads is 50%, okay, or one half, you could write it as that. And our experimental probability for tails after 100 trials was again one half or 50%. I'm just writing the percent because I'm running out of room. So what you see here is something that, that actually happens quite a bit. Now it doesn't necessarily happen after only 100, but this leads us to our key thought. Over a large number of trials, the experimental probabilities become closer to the theoretical probabilities. In other words, the more trials you do an experiment, the larger sample size you have of flipping a coin or whatever experiment you're doing, the closer and closer you'll see your experimental probabilities get to your theoretical probabilities. When we had only done 10, we weren't even close, right? Our, our experimental probabilities and our theoretical probabilities weren't even close. As we got did more, as our sample size got larger, they got closer and closer, and eventually it was exactly the same. Now, sometimes this could take a thousand coin flips. Sometimes it could take a million coin flips, 
But you'll notice, right, as you do more and more, as you get a larger and larger sample size, the theoretical and experimental probabilities will get closer and closer. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. We uh, would love for you to comment. Let us know where you watched from. Uh, we would love for you to join our Instructor Beats family by so clicking the red button and subscribing. You can follow us on all our social media accounts. Check out our probability song. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.